This is part 84 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss using jQuery progress bar with ASP.NET file upload control. So here is what we want to achieve. While the files are still being uploaded, we want to display a progress bar with this message which says uploading. As soon as all the files are uploaded, we want to display the complete message in the progress bar and we want this progress bar itself to slowly fade out. So let's see how to achieve this. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So the first step here is to add a folder to our ASP.NET project which is going to store the uploaded files. So let's call this folder uploads. The next step is to add a generic handler to our project which is going to do the actual work of uploading the files. And let's call this generic handler upload handler. So within this process request method, we are going to write code to save the files to this upload folder. So we are going to make use of this context object which is coming into this function as a parameter. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is check if the request object files property count is greater than zero. If the count of the files is greater than zero, then we know that the client has uploaded at least one file. So at that point, we want to save those files to the uploads folder. Let's go ahead and use the context object again. So context.request.files. And if you look at this files property, notice from the IntelliSense what it's returning back. It is returning HTTP file collection object. So let's go ahead and create an object of that type, HTTP file collection, and let's call this files. So this object now contains all the uploaded files. Now I'm going to use a for loop here. So for int i equals zero, i less than files dot length, files dot count, length is in jQuery. I++. So what do we want to do? We want to retrieve the file and save it to the folder. So I'm going to use this files property uh, object and files of i. And if you look at what this files object contains, look at that, it's actually going to return HTTP posted file back. So let's create a variable of that type, HTTP posted file, and let's call this file. Okay, so we are looping through each file. Now within this object, we have the file that we want to save. So now we need to get the path to which we want to save. We actually want to save that uh, file to this uploads folder. Now let's use the file name as what we have on the client machine. Okay, so that will be the file name, but we want to save that file to this uploads folder. So I'm going to create a variable here. Let's call it file name. So basically this is going to get the complete path where we want to save the file to. Okay, so we want to save it to the uploads folder. So this context object has got server.mappath function. So let's make use of that. The uploads folder is actually present in the root directory of our web project. So tilde represent the root directory. Within the root directory, we have the uploads folder. So that is the path to which we want to save. So to that path, I'm going to append the actual file name. So where can I get the file name from? I can use this file object and that has got this file name property. Now, one important thing to keep in mind is, so this code will give us the path where we want to save. We want to save it to the uploads folder and this file name property of that HTTP posted file object, you know, as far as Google Chrome is concerned, it works correctly, it returns just the file name, not the complete path of the file. That is, not the complete path of the client, you know, file. It's going to return just the file name, okay? But whereas Internet Explorer, it returns the complete path from the client machine, okay? So that's why it's, this piece of code is not going to work in IE, but this will work fine in Google Chrome. For this code to work in both the browsers, I'm going to make use of a class that is present in system.io and that is this path class and this has got a static function get file name so to this function if you give a path from that path 
this will give us the actual file name. But if you give it just the file name, it will simply return that file name. So now this piece of code is going to work across both the browsers, Chrome as well as Internet Explorer. Alright, so the last thing that we need to do is save this file to that uploads folder. So we have the complete path here. So on the file object, I'm going to you call save as function and specify the file name which contains the path, you know, including the path where we want to save. All right, so that's all the code that's actually required to upload the files, okay? But then, um, you know, all of this code, you know, I'm going to upload from my client machine, so the client is going to be this machine, server is also going to be this machine. So this piece of code will execute in no time. But for our progress bar to be visible while we are uploading files, we have to introduce some kind of network latency and to do that I'm going to make the thread that is currently executing this request to sleep for 1000 milliseconds. So while we are uploading every file let's use system.threading.thread.sleep and then make that thread sleep for 1000 milliseconds. Okay. Alright, so our handler is ready now. The next step is to design this web form so it looks like this. So we need this little text select files followed by that an upload um, file upload control and then a button and the progress bar itself. So let's include select files literal text and followed by that we need a file upload control. Let's include two HTML break elements and then we need the button. So input type equals button let's give it an ID. Let's set it to btn upload and let's set the value on the button to upload files. Okay? And let's include two more break elements and then we need the progress bar itself. Before that I'm actually going to include a div element and set the style attribute and set width of this div to 300 pixels. Otherwise, what's going to happen, the progress bar will span across the entire web page. So we don't want a big progress bar. We want maybe the width of that progress bar to be 300 pixels. So I'm using a container div here and then using another div which will be our progress bar. So let's give it this ID, progress bar. And inside this div, I'm going to include a span element. Now, why do we need span element? To display this text uploading and complete. Now we want to position this span element relative to its parent, um, you know, the div element. So I'm going to set the style attribute here and set the position property to relative. So we want this span element to be placed relative to its parent, this div element. That's why we have to set that position attribute there on the div elements itself to relative and on the span element let's go ahead and set the style attribute here let's go ahead and set position to absolute we discussed this in detail in our previous video session and we want the left positioning to be 35 percent and the top positioning to be 20 percent and let's include this initial text which says loading within the span element and let's give this span element an ID. Let's call this progress bar dash label. Okay. And initially when the web page loads, we don't want this div or the span to be visible. So I'm going to set display colon none. All right. So let's go ahead and run this page and see if we get the UI that is similar to what we have on the slide. So we have the file upload control, the upload files button. We don't have the progress bar yet. We want that to appear when we select files and when we click upload files. So, all right. So now all that is left is to write the jQuery code to call the upload handler and upload the files. So when should we upload the files whenever we click the upload files button. So we need to wire up click even handler to that button. And if you look at that button it has got an ID and it is BTN upload. So let's copy its ID and find the button by using the jQuery ID selector 
and let's wire up the click event handler. All right, so within the click event handler, the first thing that we want to do is retrieve the files from this file upload control. And that has got an ID, file upload one. So let's use the jQuery ID selector one more time, find that file upload control. And I'm going to use the files property on the file upload control. So that is going to return the files that the user has selected using this file upload control. And let's store that in a variable. Let's call that files. Okay. So if files dot length, if that is greater than zero, then we know that the user has selected at least one file using the file upload control. And at that point, we want to issue an AJAX request. Okay. But before that, we have to retrieve all the files from the uh, files collection and add it to the form data that we want to send it to the server. So I'm going to create a variable here. Let's call it form data. And I'm going to create a new instance of form data object. And I'm going to use a for loop again here to loop through each file that is present in this files variable. So for var i is equal to zero, i less than files dot length, i plus plus. So what do we want to do? To this form data object, we want to append the file name as well as the actual file that we want to send to the server. So form data dot append files of i dot name and the file itself. So files of i. All right. So at this point, this form data object has got all the data that we want to send to the server. The next step is to issue the AJAX request. So let's go ahead and use the jQuery AJAX function and specify our options. So the first thing that we need to specify is the URL that we want to call. So what's the URL? The URL is this upload handler dot ASHX. So let's copy its name and specify it as the value for our URL option. And we want to issue a post request. So I'm going to set method to post. And the data that we want to send to the server that's present in this form data object. So form data. And two important things are we need to set content type to false. So basically setting content type to false will tell jQuery not to set any header, not to set any header for content type. Okay. And we also need to set another option process data to false. So these two are important. Setting process data to false, you know, by default, uh, you know, jQuery is going to convert form data to a string. And if it does that, it's going to fail. So that's why we need to set it uh, to false, process data to false, so that it will not try to convert form data to a string. Okay. And when the request completes successfully, we want to call a function. So this is a function that gets called when the request completes. So when the request completes, that means what? We have uploaded the files. So at that point, what we want to do, we want to display this text complete within the progress bar. So to display that text, we need to find this span element. This span element has got an ID, progress bar label. So let's copy that. And actually outside this Ajax function, I'm going to create a variable. Let's call this progress bar label equals. That's the ID. So let's use the jQuery ID selector. Find the progress bar label. Similarly, we need, let's also find the progress bar dev. So I'm going to create another variable here. Let's call this progress bar dev. And the ID of the progress bar dev is progress bar. Okay. So within our success callback function, the first thing that I want to do is set the text within the progress bar label using text function. So we want to set that to complete. Okay. And then we want this progress bar to slowly, you know, 
fade out so I'm going to call that progress bar dev and call fade out and let's say we want that to fade out slowly over a period of 2000 milliseconds okay and if at all if there is any error we want to associate a callback function and that function is going to receive the error object and let's simply alert the error status text all right now when we click the upload button we are issuing the ajax request okay and at that point we also want the progress bar to be visible and we want to display the text which says low uploading on the progress bar so actually here we want to say uploading not loading okay but then in our first time it displays that when the files are uploaded successfully it's going to set the text to complete right so we want to change it back to uploading on a subsequent request so that's why when we click the button I'm going to set after we issue the request I'm going to set the text to uploading and what we want to do is we want this progress bar to display the progress bar so I'm going to call progress bar jQuery UI function and we really don't know how long the upload is going to take so what I'm going to do is get a non-deterministic um, progress bar and to do that we need to set value option to false and instead of displaying this abruptly let's slowly fade that in over a period of maybe 500 milliseconds okay so that's all there to it let's save all our changes run our project and let's select some files so within SQL and images I've got some files so I'm going to select all of these files now look at this at the moment I am able to select only one file why is that that's because you know this file upload control that we have on the page by default it it allows only one file to be uploaded if you want to upload multiple files then all you need to do is set allow it's on the file upload control so it has got allow multiple so let's set that to true so with that let's go ahead and run this now let's select our files so let's say we want to select all these files okay so let's click open so we have five files now let's click upload files look at that it says uploading and it should be uploading to our uploads folder and look at this as soon as the files are uploaded it says complete and the progress bar slowly fades out so let's go to uploads folder open that and look at that we get the files so here we have our upload handler code that's the HTML and that is our jQuery code thank you for listening and have a great day